Hi, and welcome to another episode of the CDEX tutorial. If you haven't seen the previous videos, be sure to go back and watch them first. I'll leave a link below in the descriptions. In today's episode, we are going to talk about the difference between local variable and global variables in CDEX. And then I'm going to show you an example of using global variables with the while loop. So let's get started. Recall the store text command from the previous video. When you right-click on the element and select store text, the CDEX recorder pops up a window asking you for the variable's name. In this case, the element's text is stored as a local variable, and the other commands can use this variable to perform further operations. Local variables are only visible within the test case where it's defined, where global variables can be accessed by any test case of any test suite. Global variables can be defined in several ways. The first way is similar to how you store the local variable, but instead of using the command store text, you can change the command to store global variable to save your variable globally. The second way is to use the global variable tab below. You can click on the add icon to add a set of variables consisting of the variable's name and value. The third way to add a global variable into your test case is by importing a JSON file or a CSV file. By clicking on the import icon, you can select a JSON file or a CSV file, and CDEX will parse your file and place the variables into the global variable tab when you can use them in your test cases. Now, it's time for the example. Let's say you need to fill out the sign-up form for 10 different people. In this case, we can use a while loop. Say while the index is smaller than 10, I will fill out this form using the number of the index to specify which record I'm filling the form with. When I'm done with the QN record, I move on to the next record by adding 1 to my index. Okay, it's time now to implement this concept in our CDEX recorder. Here I have the data of 10 people in a JSON file, but you can also use the CSV file if you like to. Anyways, back to our CDEX recorder. To import our file, first click on the global variable tab and then the import icon, where I can select a CSV file or a JSON file. I'm going to use my JSON file for this time and you can see that my data has been loaded into the global variable tab. Now, I'm going to first define my index as a local variable by using the command store. The target of this command is the value for your variable, which is 0. And then the value field should be the variable's name, which I'll call index. Next, I'm going to write my while loop with the condition of the index being less than the number of records. As you can see, the number of records is also defined as one of my global variables, so I can directly call it from here with my dollar sign and my curly braces if you remember from the last episode. Alright, the first operation this loop is going to perform will be opening up the form. So here I'm going to write an open command with the target being the URL to the sign up form. You can always do this part by recording if you are not familiar with manually adding commands. I just prefer to do it this way so I won't be recording some extra comments that I have to delete later. Alright, the next operation this while loop is going to perform will be filling out the name of the person for question 1. So I'm going to add a send key command which can send some value into the targeted element. So the target of this command is the targeted element. If you recall from episode 3, we can use the select icon to select your element. Now we have our element selected. The value should be filled in with the name variable of record 0. But since we want this number of record to change, we replace this 0 with the index variable, which can be done by using curly nested braces. And together, it will be record.0.name for the first loop, and record.1.name for the second loop. Let me do the same for the rest of the questions on the sign up form. After filling up the form, let's add a click add command to submit the form. And at the end of the while loop, we need to increment the index by 1. So let's use the command store evaluation. The store evaluation command can perform a JavaScript expression and store it into a variable. In the target field, I can write my JavaScript expression, which is index plus 1. And in the value field, I should write the name of the variable where this computer result will be stored. Last but not least, remember to always add an end command at the end of your loops. Now, when we execute this test case, 
CTEX recorder will fill in the sign out form 10 times with the information of the 10 people respectively. Alright, this is all for today. I hope you find this video being helpful. Be sure to check out the other videos in the playlist for more tutorials about CTEX. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.